NIJ develops voluntary standards for law enforcement equipment and recently what we've done is establish a standard for bomb suits. This is an example of obviously a bomb suit. This is Tom Sharkey. He is with the National Bomb Squad Commander's Advisory Committee, NAVSCAB. And what I want to point out is that this suit weighs about 80 plus pounds. It gets very, very hot on the inside. So when these guys wear it, obviously they, they sweat profusely. They have a fan on the inside operated by this control so that when they sweat and it fogs up, they can turn that on because obviously they have to be able to see. Most of the protection is on the front side. There's little protection on the back side. So when you see an officer approach a bomb, they never run away from the bomb. They always back up because this is where the protection is. The other thing is that when he kneels down, this helmet is so big to protect this throat, they can't see directly down. They can only see in front of them. And they can only, their periphery is only about here. So this is why you see this type of mo movement. You gotta get very used to wearing the suit. Um, it is very cumbersome, very hot. Um, you gotta constantly put the suit on and train with it on to get familiar with it. Um, bomb technicians without the suit can probably perform the job much better, but you know we're looking for the, the blast overpressure the fragmentation protection um, to assist all the bomb techs with their everyday jobs. About five or six years ago, NIJ was approached by several law enforcement entities to develop a CBRN standard, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear uh, standard for law enforcement ensembles. The reason is because most of the, those types of ensembles, the standards were written for NFPA or DOD. Uh, and they just didn't cover the type of events that our law enforcement officers would have to face. So we pulled together an SDC, a special technical committee, and we, it was comprised of engineers and scientists, people that actually wear the ensembles, practitioners, and they worked together for about two years to develop the standard, which has been published now. I retired from the U.S. Capitol Police, and uh, I retired as an inspector. And I developed probably the first hazmat police team in the country right after the sarin gas attack in 95. And uh, it was initial, we responded to the hard anthrax attack, the first biological, major biological attack in our country. And so uh, my team that I developed, that 160-man team at the Capitol, that was uh, very, very well trained. But we were missing something. We were missing the proper equipment. And at the time, like, De like Deborah said, at the time the, uh, the suits were, were made for the fire community that the law enforcement just used and adapted to the police mission. So the law enforcement community have two type, two choices, the fire standard suit or the military application. None of them fit the law enforcement mission. And so uh, with the help of the Department of Justice took this on and they got help from all the major law enforcement entities that was that, that, that partake, and I don't want to miss anybody, but it was organizations like uh, IACP, the uh, National Sheriff's Association, um, the Fraternal Order of Police, uh, DEA was a participant on the, on the federal side, uh, National Tactical Officer Association, um, as, as amongst others. And uh, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a mission that we took upon ourselves. And when we started out the, the technical committee, our decision was we, our first goal is we all agreed that this standard that uh, NIJ was, was, was uh, the effort that NIJ was going to take, that was taking place. What we decided to do, that the mission of the law enforcement community, protection of the law enforcement officers, our major goal. We weren't going to sacrifice anything for protection of law enforcement because our mission is different. The military suit was for outside in a battlefield. Policemen were kicking in doors in, in tactical operations and either rescuing or having to do our, the law enforcement SWAT mission. And so we need a special suit. The, the, the fire suits wouldn't, didn't meet our, our, our ergonomics, the requirements of the, you know, the, the coupling of the ensemble with shooting a, 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 a long gun with a mask the gloves, the dexterity, the gloves, putting your finger in the trigger guard, those type of things that we had to consider. The, flyer, the, the, the uh, fire protection that we needed from a flash fire that happens in meth labs. The, uh, you know, there's, there's been no chemical attack in our country, uh, major chemical attack. There's been uh, hazmat releases, 
um, but there's been no chemical attack, and that's what the military is super protected against. But the law enforcement community, we've done over, in the last 10 years, over 60,000 meth labs. And that's, that's a very dangerous thing. And that's just methamphetamines, not counting all the other drug type labs. And so that's, that's our mission. And uh, the fire suit, the fire standards, and the military standards was not tested to those chemicals. So we did that whole cadre of the methamphetamine chemicals uh, to, to add it into our standard.